Excel A-Level Maths, Pure Paper 2, Summer 2019, Question 11. Figure 8 shows a sketch of the curve C with equation y equals x to the power of x for x larger than 0. For part A, we need to find, by taking logarithms, the x-coordinate of the turning point of C. So, we've got our equation y equals x to the power of x. If we take the log natural of both sides, we get log y equals log x to the power of x. Using the rules of logarithms, we can see on the right hand side we've got x to the power of x inside a log. Well, we can bring that power outside as a multiple. So we've got that log y equals x log x. We now need to differentiate both sides. So on the left we've got log natural y. We're going to differentiate both sides with respect to x because to find the turning point we want dy by dx. But because the left hand side is in terms of y, we're going to use the chain rule. So for our chain rule, differential of log y with respect to x is going to be the differential of log y with respect to y, which is 1 over y, times by dy by dx. On the right hand side, we're going to use the product rule. So we've got x log x. So x times by the differential of log x is x times by 1 over x, which gives us the 1. And then we're adding the differential of x times by log x, which is just log x. So we've got 1 over y dy by dx equals 1 plus log natural x. We want the turning point, so we want dy by dx equals 0. Putting this in gives us 1 plus log natural x equals 0. So log natural x equals minus 1. Hence x equals e to the minus 1. The point P, alpha 2, lies on C. We need to show that alpha is in between 1.5 and 1.6. So we've got our y equals x to the power of x. We're going to put in those two bounds, 1.5 and 1.6, substituting them into the x and see what y's we get out. So firstly, if x is 1.5, we have 1.5 to the power of 1.5 equals 1.837. Now, if we substitute 1.6 in, we get 2.121. So we can see that those two values are either side of 2, which is the y value that we're told for point P. We can also see that C is a continuous line. Therefore, alpha must be between 1.5 and 1.6. For part C, a possible iteration formula that could be used in an attempt to find alpha is x n plus 1 equals 2 x n to the power of 1 minus x n. Using this formula with x 1 equals 1.5, we need to find x 4 to 3 decimal places. So here's our formula. We've got that x 1 equals 1.5. So we're going to substitute this in for x n. This will give us x 2. So x 2 equals 2 times 1.5 to the power of 1 minus 1.5 which is 2 times 1.5 to the power of minus 0 0.5, which is 1.633. At this stage, I would now use the answer button on my calculator, and I would type in 2 times answer to the power of 1 minus answer. The beauty of this is now if you press equals, it will give you x3. If you press equals again, it will give you x4 without having to type the whole equation in over and over again. On the screen here, though, I'm just going to show you the next steps by putting 1.633 in. So x3 is 2 times our x2 value, 1.633 to the power of 1 minus 1.633, which is 1.466. Putting that in again gives us an x4 value of 1.673. Now for part d, we need to describe the long-term behavior of xn. So again, this is where using the answer button on the calculator comes in really handy. If we've put that equation in to times answer, the power of 1 minus answer, we can keep pressing equals over and over again until we see a pattern. And eventually, we'll see that our answers keep flipping between 1 and 2. So the long-term behaviour is it alternates between 1 and 2. If you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe to the Doing Maths channel or check out some more of my videos by clicking on the links here.